You come from a dance background from when you were growing up. What has been your experience of now dancing with Tika as an adult? Yeah, um, so exactly. I came from a classical Indian dance background, which is really focused on technique. Um, and I did that for a long time growing up and then stopped. And I think for me, it was so like, it was almost like it took the joy out of dancing at points because it was so focused on technique and I needed to find, um, you know, different styles that, that felt a little more free. And so I tried a lot of different things um, like hip hop and, you know, classes around the city. Um, but something when I walked into Tika's reggaeton class, which was this amazing mix of high energy, good music, but also technique and appreciation in a way that like wasn't beating you over the head with it, but really grounded the practice in it. Um, I, it, it really spoke to me. And so I think the fact that she is able to balance like the joy of dance and the joy of listening to good music and dancing to it, but also the strong appreciation for where the dance comes from and the technique um, and alignment in your body so that you're safe and doing things well is really um, what resonates with me. Since starting to dance with Tika, I know that you've gone through various chapters in your life, in your career. What has the interplay been like between mm. those things and being on the dance floor? Yeah, well, um, Tika's been such an amazing um, teacher to help me kind of navigate some of these transitions, like what we do on the dance floor and in our privates and at retreats like this um, is not just about dance. Like she talks so much about finding the confidence in your body, finding your femininity, your strength. Um, and for me, those were really powerful messages, especially as somebody who works in tech, um, you know, definitely was a M and have been almost my whole career around a lot of masculine energy and start to kind of embody that myself that I felt over time I've lost those touches of femininity and, and that inner core lost touch with it. And um, it's been really powerful to work with Tika to to remember and to rediscover and to um, operate from that place now. And so I think for me, those are lessons that like sit within my inner core that I can carry through into confidence of my professional transitions, into my relationships, into becoming a mother. Um, and so she's she's been an amazing teacher about so many things outside of just what's on the dance floor. I feel the same way. Last question. This is your first retreat. What has this experience been like for you? Yes, it's my first retreat. I have wanted to do this for so long, for years, and I'm really grateful um, to have had this experience. But it's been um, a mix of a lot of work, like more dance than I've done in a long time, but in a way where she pushed us just to the edge and then gives us time to rest. And that's been great. Um, it's also been, you know, a lot of really, um, rejuvenating downtime and then beautiful time connecting with all the other ladies on the retreat who are all amazing and really fascinating and you know interesting people each in their own different way and so the the mix of sharing the dance floor with all of you lovely ladies and um, and then sharing this time and space outside and then just being in this beautiful place has been extremely um, just grounding and rejuvenating all of it. What draws you to her retreats in particular? It's because every Tika retreat is a once in a lifetime experience. Even if you go 10 times, every single one is a completely unique experience because you're not coming to a dance class. You are coming to be part of a collective experience. And Tika is so intuitive and aware that the people that are there, the weather, the, just the, the time of year, what is happening in the world, she's aware of all those things. And so that moment in time, that moment for where you are in your life, being in such a sacred and special place with a group of people and it will never happen again. That day will never happen again. That moment will never happen again. 
it's it's how can you miss it like how can you not be there for something that is just completely a unique experience where were you in life when you found tika so i found tika at a really transformative time in my life i was just leaving a 15 year corporate career with like severe burnout i had gotten so i think lost in who i was and why i was doing what i was doing and i'm a thinker i tend to get really stuck in my head and in the corporate world i also was always trying to be in control and trying to be appropriate and trying to be very aware of everything i was doing and holding myself and it was this amazing thing that when i started dancing with tika first very first thing she ever told me the first correction was relax and i think that almost made me cry because what she sees in you when you dance and what she sees that you need is usually what you need outside of dance and you know i feel like i'm a completely different person now almost but from going from being so in my head and scared of feeling and scared of being um i think rediscovering dance and through tika has really helped me reconnect with my body because in the us specifically the corporate world it's about like go 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 it's about thinking it's about controlling it's not about you it's not about doing what's right for you it never is and i was looking for my corporate job to give me that but instead i found that yeah. now dance and me can kind of give me that that's amazing you've danced with tika for many years now and have come on many many retreats what has that experience been like well i mean i know that i'm always going to get the consistent delivery of work. Tika prides herself in her work and she delivers each and every single time. Uh throughout the years I've been through so much emotionally and in my personal life, um death of family members, heartbreak, work stress. I know there's one thing that's constant is that Tika in her classes and going to these retreats is always going to make me feel better at the end of it. I know that if I'm feeling really crappy and I go to class, I'm going to come out more calm, more grounded, more centered, more embodied. And I really appreciate the consistency and the caliber of her work because she really does put in so much effort and it really reflects because all the women in the community that I've met feel it too. In addition to dancing with Tika on the dance floor, I know that you've also been on a strength journey. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, Tika encouraged me to not be afraid of the gym and use it as a tool to improve my dancing. So, I work with Tika one-on-one -on -one, uh to develop a program that incorporates exercises that are specific to dance and it has improved my technique exponentially. The muscle responses have just been rapid fire. So, when she tells me to do this, I'm able to in quantum time. Um I also feel like my endurance has improved and my strength on the dance floor obviously has made an impact but off of the dance floor as well I can feel myself hiking for miles and miles I'm able to engage with my clients with autism without running out of energy I'm able to walk up stairs without getting winded so overall I think the strength aspect has not only improved my dancing but my life overall Tika always encourages us to be really grounded in our feet and to really feel our feet not just when we dance but also in life. Can you talk a little bit about what your experience with that has been? So when I first started dancing and working one on one with Tika, we had a conversation about something that I'd like to improve on. And I said my posture and she said we need to start with your feet. So it took me 3 years of doing feet exercises every single day to get reacquainted with walking. It was like learning how to move all over again in a new way with more embodiment, with more consciousness, and due to the fact that now when I move around the world on the dance floor, off the dance floor, I do feel more grounded. 
And because my feet are so grounded, I feel more embodied, more present, and more aware of what's happening, not just in my feet, but throughout my whole entire body. I know that you started dancing with Tika in mostly one genre, and then you've since expanded to all of her work. Can you talk about what that experience has been like? So I started dancing with Tika um, in her reggaeton dance fusion class, which I loved and still love. And uh, over time, I expanded to dancing with her for with some of her other Afro-Cuban classes and just kind of taking whatever I could get, honestly. Um, and it's been, I've, it's forced me to kind of grow and expand and to learn more about other types of dance, which has been great. Um, I've enjoyed it because uh, I uh, was mostly into reggaeton and hip hop for several years and then kind of to go back and sort of like look at uh, the mothers, so to speak, um, and to learn about uh, the forms of dance uh, that birth these later movements has just been really informative and it's really fun to connect the dots and see here's this older movement and I can see it echoed in this contemporary dance. This is your second retreat. After the first retreat, what drew you to doing it again? Uh, so I, I found the first retreat to just be a really uh, transformative experience. It kind of, you know, it came at a point where I definitely needed a break. We're definitely coming out of the pandemic and I think it was like my first trip out of the country after the pandemic um, and I enjoyed the camaraderie with other women um, it was it was actually interesting how I didn't anticipate it but when I was here I realized like oh this is like a really deeply feminine space and uh, I didn't realize that that was actually really beneficial or that I might have been looking for that or wanting that and finding it like oh this is actually really uh, useful and I'm able to sort of grow and reflect here in ways that I not, might not have necessarily have had um, the opportunity or sort of had the, been pushed to reflect in a different environment. So I really uh, found it to be a good way to get a break, to leave your home environment and then sort of be embodied and then also be in the presence of other women and reflect and kind of dig deep into that mentioned that you have explored with Tika moving in a holistic way. Can you share more about what that's been like? Yeah, I think that one of the things that I really love about dancing with Tika is that how she weaves technique into choreography. And I makes me wish that all instructors did that, to be honest. Um, and that she teaches from a place of not just teaching you these movements, but teaching you how to move in general so you can be dancing throughout your lifetime. Um, and it's made me think about you know, my form, um, uh, how to maintain balance, am I moving with my muscles, am I moving with my joints? And I take that into other disciplines, into other dance dances, into other dance classes. Um, and it just makes me feel safe in a class to know that uh, I'm being taught how to move in a way that's healthy for my body and move in a way that will allow me to dance for years to come. Um, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, and I just wish that was the norm. Well, I'm grateful for you being here. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about how you've evolved as a student dancing with Tika? Yeah, so I came into dance um, only about five or six years ago and never having danced in my whole life. and. Really, it was taking class with Tika where she essentially taught me how to be a student. Um, you know, she is always challenging us and pushing us to open our eyes, look around, be attentive to, you know, what she's doing, the movement she's making, all of the very subtle things that I think a lot of, um, you know, students in general who come into dance, especially later in life, just don't know to be aware of and don't know to pay attention to. And so um, the way that I, you know, have evolved in terms of learning as a student has really been impacted by the way Tika teaches. Um, and, you know, the, the strength and power of that, too, is that I'm able to carry that into other classes as well. So the way that I approach classes, even with other instructors, has completely changed because of that new sense and level of awareness that I bring into the class. And, um, you know, just wanting to soak everything in, making sure that I'm constantly 
questioning, am I, you know, am I adjusted? Am I, is my form correct? Am I doing, you know, what the instructor is doing? And really just kind of constantly questioning myself um, and challenging myself to correct. And I know that you danced with her in the Bay Area, um, but you've also come on multiple retreats. What is the experience like in a class uh, context versus on a retreat? Yeah, so I mean, we all dance with Tika in different settings, but I think, you know, the class is great because we get to see her, you know, every week when she's in town. Um, and it's a great way to kind of, you know, have that part of your daily or weekly routine. Um, but, you know, with the retreats, what I love about them is that it allows us to go so much deeper. Um, the work that we do on the retreats, um, you know, it's just it working with similar movements, but for four hours at a time really allows you to just dive deeper into that movement. Let your body really feel it and remember it. And, um, you know, I've just found that it's really changed um, the way that I dance just through the retreats themselves. You dance beautifully. Thank you. I'm curious how dancing with Tika has changed your life or your experience off of the dance floor. Yeah, so I think I will be the first to admit that growing up, I was very unaware of my own body. Um, I was very, you know, I was taught and raised to be very much in my head. And so just the way that I carry myself through life and um, day to day, like I was just very unaware of myself and my body very misaligned and out of tune, un unattuned with my own body. Um, and I think really what's so powerful about Tika's work is that she teaches us to connect with our bodies, not just through dance, but even in day to day life. And um, for me, that's changed how I walk, how I hold myself, my posture, um, even how I care about my body. You know, I think about it differently. I'm more attentive, um, listening to my body as well. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, as we get older, we generally feel like our health declines, but yet I feel like this is actually one of the healthiest times I've ever had in my life just because of this new sense of awareness. Um, another thing that I really love about the retreats is that Tika has such a special way of curating such a safe space for all of us. Um, especially as women to really kind of explore ourselves in ways that maybe we would be afraid to otherwise. Um, and so the retreats are just a place where, you know, I, I rarely even take vacations anymore. I come on these retreats as a vacation because we're working through dance, but we also are in a safe space to relax, um, to try new things with our body and connect with each other as well. You come from a ballet background. What has it been like to rediscover dance through Tika? Um, it's been very liberating, I would say. Um, I studied ballet when I was a kid for about 15 years, but um, the way I practiced it was um, a little punishing, and I would say not quite as freeing as working with Tika. Um, I found myself to be quite a bit of a perfectionist um, and working towards meeting the standard as opposed to working towards growth. And I think Tika is absolutely fabulous in emphasizing growth. Wherever you come from, whatever training or lack of training you've had, um, I feel very grateful that she just took me where I was and kept me sore. You're one of the newer participants on the retreat and in her classes. What has that experience been like for you? Um, well, it's felt very warm. Uh, demanding for sure. Uh, you know, Tika teaching is demanding as it should be, which is which is why I'm here. Uh, but also, I felt incredibly welcomed, encouraged, promoted, even celebrated at times by Tika and the whole group. Um, and I think I'm slowly getting over uh, my, you know, shyness, uh, and um, I've enjoyed that hugely. Amazing. And actually, this is your second this retreat. Second, yeah. Why did you decide to come again? Um, I think it's just such a wonderful bubble in time to be here in Akumal. Um, it's spiritually, physically, mentally, uh, a really unique experience. Um, just a place of focus that I don't find in my life. And I think it's helpful beyond dance uh, to a degree that I, I didn't expect. And I just enjoy discovering. Can you talk a little bit about how you found Tika? Sure. 
I think it was 2010. Um, I I've always been interested in dancing,、um, but I never really pursue any training. And when I moved to San Francisco, I was looking for a class. So I saw a reggaeton class at ODC, and she was offering for free.、Uh, I think not she, sorry,、um, a lot of free classes that weekend. So I picked that class and I tried it. It was packed, and I loved、um, the energy, her teaching, the music. It was tough, but I definitely thought like, "Oh, this is a teacher I want to follow." And I think you tell me, ten years or more has passed since then. How has your experience dancing with her changed over that time? I think it definitely is getting better and better.、Um, I when you said that, I thought of her expression of making mole, <laughs> and I think that's that's how I experience it both in. Dancing, be able to comprehend and follow, and be more brave—a bra- more brave version of myself. Being able to put myself out there,、um, and also just to feel, to really find that joy in me and expression as a kid that I wouldn't bother to hide. And now, as an adult, I'm re-experiencing all this joy. When you came on this retreat the first time, you were a very new mother.、Mm-hmm. What was that experience like, and why did you decide to come at that moment in your life? Yeah, I think、um, I I was a, I, I had a pretty lucky like、um, pregnancy, so I didn't feel any discomfort. But I my body wanted to move like pretty soon afterwards. So I think for me, like dance was my go-to. I think it's more than movement, but it's like the body, soul, the mood elevation. And I was very interested in taking it deeper and having my space to do that. And my partner was very supportive in that. He's like, "Oh, that's your, you know, that's what will make you happy. Go." So I made the decision to come, and I wasn't sure whether I, how I might feel、uh, being away from my baby for a while. But I was glad to find that I didn't feel guilt. I felt joy in dance. I was very present. I even found new liberation in me that I didn't know existed. I would be ridiculous. I'll be pumping during class break with some cover. I'll be walking on the street with a cover, and I would just do my thing. And it was very atypical of me. Usually, I overthought. So I think it's just a newfound freedom, and I love the space and the. People, the community, all the combination. You have a very high-powered career in addition to being a mother, and yet you've prioritized coming on these retreats. Why has that been for you? Well, I didn't sense any immediate、uh, connection. I feel like dance was like how like was my personal development. And I, I actually do share with people that I dance、uh, in my personal life. I think before I would hide it, I would be shy, but now it's becoming just such a philosophical and personal development、uh, that I'm proud to share and I'm excited to share with people because.、Um, so I actually find a lot of a lot of things Tika share in dance. I think sometimes it's. Very relatable in multiple life situations, so I sometimes share these analogies even at work. I've been dancing with Tika for many, many moons. I think I remember the first time I walked into one of her classes and how amazing I felt afterwards. And I was just like, "Oh, thank God, I found someone that I can dance with and move with, and that can hold such amazing space for women and lift us up so high." And make us feel like we can leave and do anything. Amazing! You are an amazing healthcare professional. Can you talk a little bit about how your work in health has interrelated to your work with dancing with Tika? Well, I feel like、uh, Tika's work has been an integral part of my health and wellness and my self-care for sure. I mean, I think every time I go to a dance class and every time I go on one of her retreats, it's like a tune-up. Like it's an amazing way to balance yourself, mind, body, soul, spirit,、uh, with such strength. 
you know, um, that I can take that strength and take it out, and take it into the OR, I can take it into the hospital and deal with like some really heavy stuff and remain in balance and remain in alignment, like standing in the OR for like a long case. I'm sometimes just, you know, doing a little plie, making sure I'm in alignment, but it's all, she's always with me. I'm still. I feel the same. Can you share a little bit about the impact of dancing with Tika off of the dance floor? Yeah, I think uh, dancing with Tika on the dance floor, she's always talking about, you know, you're, you have to be constantly learning. Like it's, a, it's education in every way. It's like a language, you know? And I think in life, taking that off the dance floor, like you're always learning, you're always tending to something. And she recently, I love the quote that she said, she's like, you have to make peace with becoming a constant gardener. And like, you're just always nurturing yourself and finding it wherever you can. But that's one of the main takeaways, learning, growing, reaching, and yeah, finding joy in the reach.